I'm here with Bruce Maynard. Bruce is the one of the well, the developer of the no-kill cropping system. Bruce, I'd just like you to tell us a little bit about how it came about and uh, how your family's used it over the last however long it's been that you developed it. No-kill cropping was uh, implemented from 1996. It was first thought about in 1995 on our property in Narromine, Central West New South Wales, and uh, since that time. We've been uh, using it on a variety of different crops and the method has uh, spread and been used by other farmers all over Australia. And uh, with no-kill cropping, uh, wheat crops and, uh, and barley and oats and even summer crops have been sown such as sorghum and uh, millet. Bruce, can you tell us the, the principles of no-kill cropping? The principles of no-kill cropping are number one, sowing is done dry, number two, it must be done with a coulter type implement or straight disc. And number three is no fertiliser. Number four, no pesticides or herbicides. And number five is no change to the grazing regime. A brief explanation of all these principles are, number one, sowing dry is integral to the success of the, the method. If uh, you sow wet, then you're almost always uh, forced toward doing something uh, to control weeds because weeds have the upper hand. By sowing dry you're giving whatever you're sowing the upper hand. The second principle of a straight disc implement means that there is minimal disturbance. You aim not to kill anything in the grassland. The third principle, no fertiliser, is this lowers the economic cost, takes out almost most of the economic risk of this operation and also doesn't lead to a simplification of the grassland because it doesn't advantage introduced annuals. Fourth principle of no chemicals or herbicides applied is very important again because we do not wish to simplify the grassland one bit. We want to keep all components of the grassland there. The fifth principle is no change to the grazing method and that really is emphasising the fact that you can go and sow uh, into grasslands without having to remove all the grass and litter material there to get your machine through. The reason why you uh, do no-kill cropping is to maintain all the full diversity of the pastures while you're able to grow crops. So this enables you to continue to build carbon in your paddocks without uh, using up any carbon by tilling the soil and also using a very, very small amount of energy to put the crop in, so therefore you're producing more calories than you're actually using in the, in the, um, in the crop sowing exercise. This enables the full biodiversity of the paddock to stay there and in effect it doesn't kill out any plants. Bruce, I was wondering whether you're aiming for a grain gross margin or grain and grazing gross margin and how do you manage these crops once they're established? We're aiming for a gross margin from both, the opportunity to have both and make the choice each year as the circumstances dictate. So with no-kill cropping you put the seed in the ground and the, uh, the crop begins to grow immediately that there's a rainfall event suitable for the germination. From that point the choice is yours which way you wish to go with that, that crop. So you may uh, choose to graze it during the year or you may choose to graze it and go for a grain yield or just only keep it for a grain yield. The major grain yields are achieved in, in years where there is average to above average rainfalls and, uh, but in all other years you are still adding significant dry matter at a really very small cost. Bruce, how important is it that you're maintaining ground cover when you're no-kill cropping? Ground cover is critical with no-kill cropping. Just as with pasture cropping, one of the main aims is to maintain complete ground cover all the time, thereby ensuring that there is no possibility of soil loss and also maximising the, uh, the microbial activity at the soil surface. This means that you have the most potential for nutrient cycling and the most potential to store carbon in your soils. It creates soil conditions that are both cooler in the hot summer months and warmer in the, uh, the cool winter months and it, and it retains as, as much moisture as you possibly can. Bruce, it sounds like uh, 
no-kill cropping is a very low cost cropping system. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the costs involved? No-kill typically has shown reductions of the order of 80% in costs for people that have been practicing it. This is very important to lower the risk of cropping and coupled with the fact that there is very, very little diversity risk for sowing the crop means that you actually can achieve a triple bottom line result here. That you have a very, very low cost option to put in a crop and you still have all the grazing and natural options of that paddock still left to you.